Well, hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to our Wednesday card making. It's Aaron Reed here. And today we're going to do a little bit of some layering stamps. Now, I like to stamp. I have stamped a lot, but I've never had a layered stamp before. So I finally got this one. And this is what I feel like is one of those introductory layered stamps. It even has the guide for you on the back of what to do. There is a die set that goes along with this. I do not have that part. So all I'm going to be doing is just stamping directly onto the card. Now, I am very cautious about how much I stamp directly onto my card. So I will stamp a layered section onto my card. And it's as simple as that. So it's just about layering up your stamps. Now on the back of this particular card set, it shows that you can die cut them out and how you can layer them all up. And I don't have that luxury and I'm not going to fussy cut this thing out. So that's why it's just being stamped directly on here. So I have taken this hero art stamp set and it has up all the links will be down and below in the information section. And if you're watching this later, it's all down there for you as well. And I actually have left my little stamp sitting on here from last night when I made my sample. So this is the sample I made. And the whole point of this is that you need to have different colors of inks. So I'm going to go ahead and just lift the top of my stamp up, flip it around because I'm going to be using it a lot today. We're gonna do a completely different color than what I've shown you here. And you guys all know my favorite colors are blues and greens. So we're gonna go with the blue set. So the key thing here is that you've got three different stamps for the flower. So you need three different colors in the same story. So like three different pinks, three different yellows, three different oranges. Now you can kind of mix yellow and orange, three different blues, three different purples, something like that. So it really does give you that layered effect of the same flower. So if you are here this morning, make sure you say hi. Oh, there are a few people that are already on. Yay, good morning. So this one, I took my paint box color blocks inks and I did it in, this is the mermaid set, and I did it with these three colors. So I literally just went down the line in a paint box. This is another version of a paint box and pick three colors that are like right next to each other. And that's what makes it simple when you have this. Like I would pick these three colors or these three colors, or you could do these three or these three. You could even go with these last three, or I don't know if I would go with these first three because this one gets kind of into that uh, teal. I would probably pick a different one, but you get the idea. Pick the three that are closest together for the flower. So for this card, this card we're going to do together, I'm picking these three. They're right next to each other, which makes my life really easy. I don't have to hunt for car colors and decide what I want to do. It's just done for me. Yay. I like the simpleness of, of when things are done for me. So there is an order to doing the stamps. The stamp you do is the big background stamp. And for this card, I put the tall flower more towards the left and the shorter flower to the right. I did not want to deal with masking. I just wanted this to be a very simple introductory. How do you stamp with a layered stamp card? You know, if you don't have die cuts, you don't want to mask. You don't want to have to worry about having, you know, multiple. You're just wanting to, to learn how to do the multi-layered stamp. That's what this card's all about and making it simple and very pretty. So I layered my flowers because I thought two looked nice. If I had dyes, you could add a third, but that's not where we're going here. And sorry if it gets really loud or you hear thunder. It's just, it's pouring here all of a sudden. It's like going crazy. It's a lot of rain going on in the background. I don't know if you guys can hear it or not, but my window is right behind me. Uh, so for this one, I have the larger stamp on the left and the shorter stamp on the right, but we're going to flip flop. We're going to mirror image. So you can really kind of play around with that. So I'm going to have my taller stamp. And for this, you really do need a stamp positioning system. If you're going to try and eyeball this, it would be a total mess, I think. I mean, it, unless you're really, really good. I'm not really, really good. I would probably screw that up every time, but it could be done. It just might not like be dead on. But you know what? I didn't layer this super perfect either. I kind of went a little bit off on this one. So you can tell just right above the top, you can tell that the flower was a little higher. When I lined up my stamp, I didn't nail it down as best as I could. So, you know, you, could you do it? Yeah. Would it look awful? Probably not. <laughs> so layer up my first stamp, you go with the lightest color first. So I'm going to pick this one. Cool thing about these is they pop out. There's a couple of tricks I'm going to show you guys that when I was practicing, I did quite a few run throughs getting ready for this live video. And these are just some tips when you're doing your layering stamps. 
to kind of make it work better. Now, this is a pigment ink, which means that it can smear because this is the only sets of inks that I had and I can talk instead of just flailing my hands around. So stamp your stamp. And it does not have to be a super, super uh, clean looking stamp, if that makes sense. So a couple of tips. I need to pick this stamp up and move it to make my second image. I don't want to just layer, layer, layer on top of this. Since I'm dealing with the same color, I'm gonna do both at the same time. My tip to you is get a paper towel. Now, since I'm dealing with a pigment ink, which is basically a water-based ink, put a little water on here, and I'm just gonna kind of, I don't know if you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm just kind of wiping my stamp off real fast. This is the mistake I did not do on the first card I made on the first round, practice round. The reason for that is because I wanna come in now, and I'm just gonna kind of pat it off to the side here, because I wanna lay down my second stamp. And if I didn't clean my stamp off, which remember last time I was doing a live video, I was like, why don't you clean your stamps? And I said, well, it depends. And this is the depends scenario. I don't wanna leave markings. So I can lift this up and look, it's clean. There's no markings on my paper anymore because I cleaned my stamp off. This is where having your stamp clean really is gonna make a difference. So now you're gonna lift it back up, stamp your stamped image. And I was doing a whole bunch of different versions of this particular project. And what if I wanna come in with a different color? I did clean my stamp between each iteration, basically. Okay, that needs a little bit more. I can barely see that. I didn't push. You can also, don't overjuice your stamps to the point where it's a mess, but you do wanna make sure that you get a good enough coverage. So the MISTI does allow, or any kind of stamp positioner, does allow you to get a good enough definition of your stamps. There we go, there. So we're gonna come in, again, clean my stamp off because I'm putting it away. And I don't wanna get all the other stamps mucky as I'm putting this thing away. Everybody's super quiet this morning. You guys having a good morning? I hope you are. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in with the next layer. And if you're not sure, most layered stamps will kind of show you, like this one shows you what's next. So it's the one with the next amount of stamp coverage, which happens to be this. And I can kind of tell if you pull up your stamps, this one's got more coverage looking than this one. The most, the least detail or the just the outline is the last one you're gonna do. So I'm gonna come in with my next stamp as best as I can, line that guy up. How I determine that is because if I can see a little bit of the blue from underneath, not so hot. There we go, that's what you don't wanna see. So I'm just kind of moving it around, getting my best judgment of where I think it's gonna go. Line that up, pop my old color back in, and now I'm gonna to go to the next darker down the line. And I'm gonna ink up my stamp. So, you know, it's, just about inking up stamps. There we go. And then drop this down over top and it is starting to come together. And this is where you see the beauty of it kind of lining up. Clean off my stamp and my stamp block because I don't want to get all this muss and fuss. Now, another thing you could do if you've got a stamp or an ink that you're using, I always keep mine a little bad. How they have the anti-static, well, it's also kind of an anti-bleed. You can give it a little tiny pat and that, and kind of blow it off. It stops the ink, and then just kind of dab it. It stops the ink from um, smearing, so that's another thing that you could do if you would like to do that as well. So there's all different kinds of versions. That one is called the um, Perfect Pouch, and it just has the anti-static in there. Notice I'm not really too worried about the staticky part of this. I'm more worried about the smearing end, because I did that a ton on my first one. And it looks bad. This is another card that the more perfect it looks, meaning that you don't make the mistakes. And if you're just careful, you can be really good about not making sure you make those little boo-boos. Uh, all the other cards I made, I did not add the, the powder. Just as a heads up, I was just layering, 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 cleaning off my stamp, except for the first one I totally screwed up. So just come in, stamp on top. It's already looking so cool. I just love those layers of colors. Another trick I found, so instead of using my paper towel and wiping my stamp and possibly damaging it, is I was taking a tiny stamp block and then just a stamp cleaning pad and just coming in and wiping it down real fast before I put it away. So that was another thing I was doing. I also had a stamp cleaner that I and conditioner that I could get in there and kind of clean it up. But the thing about a acrylic stamp is that it is going to, or 
yeah, an acrylic stand, that's the word I'm looking for, is it is going to, yeah, I have the right one, I'm talking and not paying attention. It's going to stain and that's okay. You're not, you're never going to get them back to, this is the one I've not used out of this set, just super pristine. It's just something about the acrylic. There's just no way. It's going to get colored and it's going to have some character to it. All right, now going on to my last stamp. This happens to be a trio, so there's three of them here. Coming in and doing the very, very last one. It's just got the final definition. Lay this down here and add that on top. See, look, I misaligned it, <laughs> but it still looks cool. I didn't quite, this is the one I have the hardest time trying to line up just perfectly. Now, before I mess up this card, I'm gonna move this guy out of the way to the other side because I keep putting my dirty stuff over here. So this is the one I seem to have the hardest time. I always go a little bit too high, I think, or a little too low, it looks like. So uh, now I'll probably be too high. <laughs> it's okay. I still think it looks pretty, so it's all good. Layer in the next stamp. So my kids are on spring break next week, and next Wednesday we are going to try Hey, look at that. That looks really good. I lined that up just perfectly. And I'm already seeing a tiny, tiny, tiny smidgen of a smear. smear. It's barely there, but enough that I'm going to come in and I'm going to make sure that this doesn't move around. There we go. And you can see I'm already pulling off a lot of ink off my stamps. So I'm just getting the extra. It's All I'm doing now is that there's a lot of powder on here that I just put on there. So I'm just cleaning that up. Okay, clean off my stamp. Now it's time for the stems. So my eldest, he's 13, is going to come in and try and help me moderate. So I thought, you know, it's hard for me to turn around and see the comments, even though there's not a whole lot of comments happening today, <laughs> which is fine. You guys are quiet. It's all good. Maybe we're having a nice relaxing morning. Who knows? Um, but I was, sometimes I've had more comments than I have known how to keep up with. And so it just gets crazy. Okay. For this section, and the other thing I keep a paper towel handy and my water is my fingers will sometimes get ink on them. And I don't want to, as I'm touching my paper to get it dirty. So look, I already did it right. That's just powder. Okay. I already got a little something on there. Ah, <laughs> no matter how hard I try, I tend to screw it up. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do this stem. I'm going to come over here. I have this right here. So there's two layers to the stem. And again, you can look on the back of the instructions for this particular stamp. I placed the first layer of the stem. I am done with this color sets of ink. And I'm moving on to my next one. This is citrus. You guys can barely see that. I'm sorry. This one here is citrus. Oh, there you are. Oh, concentrating on what you're doing. That's why you're not commenting. It's all good. <laughs> it's perfectly fine. Now, as I was playing around with all my stems, I kept humming and hawing over what colors I wanted to use. And um, I found that these were really bright, but it was the closest I had for the greens. And I didn't want to match it when I first made, I'll show you. This is my this was my practice, and I, what I want to put in the middle. There is a little stamp in this particular stamp set that has a center, and when I put the yellow in there, I just thought it did not look good. I tried to come in and color it with the pen. I didn't like it. I liked it better blank without anything in there, and that's the way I left the pink one, blank. So when I was playing with the different colors of what I wanted to have for the stems, I don't truly mind this, but I needed a darker color, and what I used is I used this one and this one. So... For this stem right here, I used the lightest, I skipped the middle and then went to the darkest. But then when I got to this one, and I was like, I need a darker ink. And I wasn't a big fan of this color. It just didn't quite set me right. And this was way too Kelly green. It didn't fit in the, the story of the colors that I wanted. So I did pull out another stamp set, an ink set, sorry. And I have this other green right here, which is more of an olive and it fit kind of in the the darkness of the tones, and that's what I went with. So what I'm doing for the main part of the stem is I'm not using the lightest, lightest color. I did the two darker colors instead. So it's changing it up because the leaf has three layers, but the stem only has two. But I didn't want to have five different color actions happening here. So long story short, I did a little bit of a blend. I kind of tested it just to see what I would like. 
if that doesn't bother you, totally could do the three colors in a row here. It would be fine. But I was being a little persnickety on that one. Okay, so coming in, adding that goes in perfectly. I'm totally also okay with the fact that it may not have full coverage. You guys can see that. I just want to make sure that I'm not off camera. So I want to make sure, it doesn't bother me because not all plants are perfect. And I think that's what I love about flower stamps and why I gravitated toward this stamp as a starting offset um, because I didn't want to, I didn't have to worry about it looking too, too perfect in case I did mess it up. Okay, so here is another trick. Notice how my stem, because my flower is all the way at the top, does not go all the way down. Well, we're going to show you a little trick of Rooney here. We're going to lift that up. I didn't quite clean up. That's okay. Go ahead and stamp this one down. Get it down. And I don't can't say this is going to work for every single stamp set that's a layered stamp, but it does happen to work for this one. I need my stem to go all the way to the bottom. So clean off my stamp set here. Actually, I really want to make sure this is clean because I don't want to screw this up. So I'm going to come in with my stamp cleaner real fast. And true, there's nothing on here. This is completely bone dry. Uh, you can put a, a cleaning solution in there, but mostly I'm just kind of using it as like a dry clean, not dry cleaning, but as a, like a, you know what I mean. <laughs> okay, the original stamp, you can tell there's a little bit of a larger section at the top. I'm inverting it. I'm flipping it upside down and I got to lift my card up a little higher for this. Here we go. And I am going to stamp finishing it. So I'm lining it up and it's okay if it overlaps a tiny bit. I actually kind of want to do that. So if you notice, I've just finished, I'm finishing out the stem real fast. Line that up, go ahead and stamp that down. And I don't even have to worry about trying to ink the whole thing, even though I did. And then boom, I've finished out my stem. So it happens to work for this particular stamp set because I just want to finish it out. So look at your stamps in a different way. Think, well, you know, can I get it to work? And it will work for the second half of this stamp as well because it's long and skinny and it's the same continuous. And I lucked out, it's actually open on one end. It doesn't curve to a bottom, meaning that the, the stem, the, these sections are just parallel and they don't cup into a whole section. I don't know if that made sense or not, but hopefully you understand what I was saying. This is another one that I kept screwing up. It's the outlining stamps that I always tended to muss up. All right, so line it up just perfectly. So have any of you ever done layered stamps before? And what is your opinion? Yay, nay, like it. You like the look of it, but it's too much of a pain in the butt. Do you enjoy doing it because it's something that's a little bit different than what you're normally used to? Is it just too fussy? See, here's nice layeredness. It's just a little bit darker. And then we'll bring in the lighter color with the leaves. You know, what's your opinion on them? Is it just one more thing that you are like, nah, I don't know if I need that or not. I, I'm, I'm always curious to see what people think. I, I tend to, you know, craft a lot and do lots of stuff. So having something kind of fun and different, I enjoy that. Um, but that's me. I mean, I'm not everybody. <laughs> so I don't know. What's your opinion on that? Coming in with the next layer of ink. Notice I'm going with a darker ink now. Adding that darkness in there. See, look, there it is. Now I need to finish this too. So I got to come around. Oh, there goes the rain again. Super rainy. It's coming. It's coming. All right, flipping it around. Try and line up as best as I possibly can to finish that stem. There we go. And then ink it up. So this is why you have to clean your stamp between each one so you can lay it down without it having a problem. Oh, I nailed that. <laughs> that's awesome. You can't even tell that that's there. And that's how you know you did a good stamp. I didn't do that on the last one. I messed up. And is there is every, because there's so many layers of stamps on here, you're going to get some things perfect, and then you're going to get some that are off. You know, but I think that's part of the whole, you know, experience. I got to clean this one off. There's lots of layers here. There we go. Lots of stuff on that little stamp. They're starting to look very, the stems are starting to look really, really green. <laughs> Okay, now we're getting into the leaves. Now, the cool thing about the leaf, hang on, let me clean my hands off because I don't want to get my paper all dirty. I've been touching all the stuff. 
adding a little paper towel or some baby wipes or something off to your side is going to be your savior to make sure that your everything stays clean. At least that's how I do it. I know other people have different ways of doing it, but I am not a uh, clean crafter. I tend to get, I mean, if you see my desk, it's crazy business here, right? So oh, I don't know why I'm covering that up. I'm about to use that again. All right. So with the leaf. Make sure I have the right side of the stamp down. With the leaf, you can have your leaf come off this way, which I'm gonna do for the first one. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave the, the stem part where the leaf comes off is right where I extended my, um, my stem. That's where the leaf is gonna come off, just like that. You can also have your leaf come out the other way. Now the cool thing is, is that I can have my leaf come off so I can make it shorter. So I just see it poking and I can angle it. I think I'm gonna angle a little bit more. So I'm gonna have one coming this way. And I'm not reversing it. I'm just putting it at a different, different angle. But this one's going to go right here, just like that. Line it up. And then now, because this is the base of a three-layered stamp, and you can see there's three of them together, I'm going with a lighter color than what I've started before to bring in a little bit of a lightness. So this is a color I did not use. I did skip the middle one. You wouldn't have to. I just didn't want to pick colors that would be so contrary to the original um, story of my flower. I wanted to pick stems and leaves that would make sense. So it looks very light. That's cool because we're gonna add layers on top of that now. Clean off my stamp again so I can move it and line it up exactly where I want to. Oh, there's some commentary now. I have several that I want to use, but I haven't tried them yet. You made it look easy. You know what, I, the first one, like I said, the, the very first one I did, it's right here. You know, it's, it's, I followed the instructions. I did it very simply with the stamping platform. It did make it simple. Did I make boo-boos? Yes. But the cleaning between the stamping made a huge difference. And then just spending a little bit of time lining it up. And don't think that the first one, and maybe go in with the mindset that your first one, you might screw up and that's okay. It's playing. I mean, how many times you know, do I tell my kids, try, try again, you fall off your bike, get up and keep going. So just because you mess up the first time you do it, does that mean that you shouldn't keep going? No, of course not. It just means try again. So that's my theory on that. And let me keep reading. Um, oh, it's raining here too. Yep. Central Texas is raining. Woo Seattle is clear. <laughs> You're watching. Oh, look at that. It's kind of funny. In Seattle, it's clear as a bell in a time of the year when it could be just raining like crazy. So awesome. I'm glad Seattle is not just pouring down on you. My parents live up in that area. Oh, yeah. Actually, I'm originally from Canada. Let me put this tamp away. And so every summer I take the kids up and we go spend a whole bunch of time up there. And they live in British Columbia and just north of Seattle. And they always, and I've lived there in the past too. So we go up and visit and we get out of the heat of Texas in the summer and we see them. Not going to be a whole lot of live video coming from that time while we're up there. I'll tell you that. Now I'm going back with the, remember I'm skipping a color and going to the lighter color that was on the stem. So that's this one. So, and they always comment it's now that they've lived there, They've recently moved back after being gone from Canada for a long time. They've retired and they're noticing how rainy it is because they lived here in Texas for a long time, too. Anyway, long story short. All right. What do we got? Lovely. Florida is 72 and sunny. Ooh. So good morning, everybody who's jumped on. Kathleen, Debbie, Susan. I think I caught everybody. That's, yeah. Good morning, all. All right. Lining up my next stamp. So I feel like a chatterbox this morning. Oh, it was one heck of a morning now. My kid comes running in. It's my middle son. And uh, he's like, mom, 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 we're late for school. And I look over at the alarm. Somehow I totally missed the alarm. It's been a crazy morning. Completely missed the alarm. Lining up my stamp again. Look at that. I can talk and actually stamp at the same time. Must be getting better at this. And the alarm showed the exact time the kids had to be at school. Yeah, we totally woke up at the same moment that they need to be there. Luckily, my oldest son, he carpools with a neighbor across the street. And uh, <clears throat> he has a little bit of extra time. And he was able to get out the door and be in the car. So he got to his school because middle school starts later than elementary school here. And um, but my, my younger kids were totally late for school. I'm the worst mom in the world this morning. I just, 
I don't know. I just, I, I know I heard my alarm. I remembered hearing it, but I'm the kind of person that when I hear my alarm, there you go. That did pretty good on that one. So see, you can see all three layers there. That's awesome. I just think those are so pretty. It's so simple how you just layers of ink, layers of stamps and how elegant that looks. I just think it's like magic. I don't know. I, like I said, I, I heard my alarm, but I'm the kind of person that I have to set my alarm and hear it two to three times to kind of wake myself up. So I have it set to go off three times. I know when I hear it, but I guess I was so tired this morning that I heard it and I turned it off. And then I, I guess in my mind, I didn't register that I'd already turned it off the three times because that's what I have it set for on my phone. Look at that. You're so pretty. And it won't go off again. I probably should change that to have it go off a fourth time just in case like a morning like this morning happens. Um, so he comes running and I guess his little alarm and his body told him it was time to get up and away we went and they were, luckily they weren't horribly late for school. My kids are pretty fast, especially I'm like, mom's late. We got to go. <laughs> they got up and got moving pretty fast. So they were only, I think 15 minutes late for school. So that's not bad from getting up to being at school. I think 15 minutes late and it's raining. I thought we did pretty good, but the fact that we were late again, and this is not the first time this has happened, that that's the bad part. It's not like this was an anomaly in the whole thing. This is like the third time this school year. Mom's failing. <laughs> oh, I still need my, no, I don't need my stamp. I'm sorry. I already did this portion of the stamp. Okay. Uh, funny little commentary this morning that I'm rushing back and going, okay, I got to get ready for this. I've already done everything except for like little doodads getting ready for the, you know, one little thing in the morning. So I'm just putting down that non-smearing thing on my ink or on my, my stamp. But it's looking pretty good, right? All right. I do want to add one final thing to this. And this, again, is just a me thing because I like the look of it. And I got to go back to the original stamp set. And let me pull out the pieces. Oh, everything's sticking to each other. Lots of stuff happening. It's pull. I'm covering up all my ink so I don't mess up. I had already previously stamped. Oh man, I gotta redo it because it's got a boo-boo. That's okay. I needed to refix something anyway. So yeah, I gotta get my stamp block back. Actually, we'll just use this. So on here I have one of the stamps and it says uh, you were one to admire, but I messed up. Let me make sure the other side's clean. Oh, it is. So let me pull out it's this one. Yes. So we're going to go ahead and stamp this down, but I want to fix my fishtail. Actually, you know what? What my problem was is that I, I pushed it too far to one side. This is going to fit on here basically like this, but I didn't like the way that this was centered. So I was going to re cattail that, but it, if you notice, it's got a little bit of a something on there, probably from my lid. So I'm just going to re-ink it. I'm going with the darkest color, keeping with the color story I already have. So coming in. We are not on spring break this week. So let me ask the question about spring break. Um, we are on spring break next week. We, I think because Texas is so big, they like to stagger the weeks that we have spring breaks that we're all not on top of each other. That's my theory. I'm sticking with it. Because I have noticed that different parts of Texas will spring break at different times. I don't know if that's the case for all the other states. Oh, look at that. I did a pretty good job. Now I'm going to ink, but I want to ink it a different color. I want to ink it the same color. So I'm going to take this again so I don't smash that up. So I think part of it's also because people in Texas, there's the kids and I were chatting about this the other day. There's one of two things they like to do for spring break. Oh, man, look, I inked. Okay. I'm talking and not trying to be super careful. And I made some boo-boos, but you know what? I'm making a few boo-boos on here. So, uh. You didn't see me do all that. Try to pick up my ink without getting my fingers mucky. It's not working. So this is one step you could avoid if you don't want to have the inky mess that I'm seemingly creating on my hands right this second. Doing a fantastic job of it. Just wiping this off. I'm going to re-smash this so it doesn't blend and bleed. And then pick up the powder. So again, the, what we were talking about with the kids and the theory. So. Yeah, it's fine. It's got a little smudge of Roonies. If that bugs you, but I just I don't want to hold you guys up with the fact that I'm going to redo something from scratch again because I don't have any other things made. Oh, I, talking and not thinking and trying to con continue a conversation that I'm 
having in my head, no, I'm going to go with the lighter one this time. So there's going to be some layers with this card. I know that I've got ink on my fingers again. The backpack layer right here, which I've already done, I just cut this to be a little bit bigger, is the darker ink. This is the medium. So I'm going to do, I'm going to ink the edges of this in the lightest color. So the kids and I were thinking, and this is our theory, that there's two kinds of spring break activities that people probably want to do the most. One is go to the beach and two is go skiing. It's kind of cool that spring break, you could really kind of go either way with that. So driving wise for Texans, they go to Colorado and there's only one or two mountain places in Colorado that are the closest that you could make in like one day. And then you'd have a good three days or you can really, you could do it, drive it in two days, but you could still easily do it in one day. Have, and that's even from Houston, you could drive, which is all, all the way on the other side compared to where Colorado is. Um, and then make it there, ski for three to four days, even five days if you wanted to, and then make it back and have a day of relaxing before you have to move on with your life. And I, somehow I think like the ski mountains and all the beach resorts, but I'm like, hey, you can't let all of Texas get out at one time. That's way too many people. We can't fit you. But if you stagger it and you split up who goes when in this month of March, nobody gets a different week and maybe it's in three to four weeks, we can handle it. And then it's a win-win for everybody because everybody gets a little bit of money spread out over a month versus just one week. So again, that's my theory. <laughs> I don't know if it's the right theory, but it seems to work because whenever I've talked and we've gone skiing and during this time frame, um, we found out that the ski mountain really does appreciate that it gets crazy busy during some times and that it gets staggered up and they have a month full of really good, you know, vacationing money coming in. You never use an alarm. How do you function without you? Okay, I gotta make sure I'm doing this the right thing. I guess your body naturally wakes up. See, I'm a night hawk. I am wired to want to stay up until two or three o'clock in the morning. And getting up early, my body's like, what is wrong with you? Why are you doing this? Something's functioning that's not here. I'm not a morning person. Not at all. Okay, adding this. Now, if you look at the original card that I made, because I had the larger flower on the left, and now I've just completely mirror imaged them, and I'm having a larger flower on the right, I wanna put my little banner here, and if you notice I'm popping it up, you don't have to do that, you could totally leave it flat, but I'm popping it up and I'm having it on the opposite side again. I also did make this one a little bit bigger, and in this particular stamp set, there are three different sentiments. So here it says, hello friend, you are one to admire, I mean, they all work. And then it's just a matter of placing it on my card. And that's as simple as that card gets. I mean, I feel like there's lots of, for one card, I mean, how long did that take me? And I did have some stuff prepped. So what, what are we at minute wise? We are at 30 minutes. So did I stop and chat and kind of explain some stuff instead of going fast? Yes. But, you know, when I was making this card, I, I had the TV on or not TV. It was my computer. I'm on, I'm on a house binge right now. Do you guys remember that old TV show with the doctor house? Yeah, I'm on season three. So I've been binge watching. That. So I, as I'm watching the TV, you're not constantly staring at your card, which I think is kind of fun. You can have a show in the background. You can have music happening. You, know, you could be chatting with somebody if you're at a crop or something. So are you going to 100% strictly focus on what you're doing at that moment? No. So is this a longer type of card to make? Yep. <laughs> But did I have fun? Oh, heck yeah. And maybe that's your that's your jam. I don't know. <laughs> I, I enjoy it. I think they look beautiful. Would I be able to mass produce this card? Probably, because when you get your stamp positioner out, for instance, when I stamped the first layer of this card, I would have pulled out, let's say if I'm going to make four of them, I would have done four in a row. Then I would move my stamp. And then I would have done the four on that stamp. Lots of cleaning in between, but you could mass produce this as long as you kept with the same color story. Um, and so every time I move my stamp, I would do that for all four or five of the cards I was doing. So it can get pretty fast, actually. You know, and I did some extra things like adding extra layers of colors, but I like the look of the multicolor and having that ink layer in the background. I think it just looks kind of cool. So I'm trying to catch up on all your comments. I'm so glad you guys like the card. Uh, I don't think it's me. Oh, these are your type of projects and you love to watch. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, so I think that's about it. I'm trying to catch what everybody else is saying. And that's, yeah, having fun is definitely the most important thing. 
All right. Well, good afternoon. Well, it's not quite afternoon. It's still morning. Well, I hope everybody has a wonderful morning. And I hope you enjoyed making these cards with me and showing you how simple a layered stamp can be. It does look kind of daunting when you've seen somebody or this is the other thing. This is also why I wanted to do it live. I wanted you guys to see what it really took to do it. Sometimes when you look at other videos and they're great inspiration, but you see they're fast. Sometimes they'll edit stuff out and it could be editing all the oopsies, which does happen. I mean, I do it on my recorded videos too, but you don't see like, you know, I made some little oopsies and if I wasn't live, would I have redone that? Probably, but does it work? Yep. It's just fine. So, you know, it really depends on what you want to do. So thanks so much for stopping by. Don't forget to subscribe. Links are all down below. Hope you guys have a great day. And Hope you guys start crafting and have a wonderful morning and I will see you guys again later. Bye-bye, everybody.